In the HTML and CSS chapters, we learned a lot about separating structure from presentation. It can be easy to make mistakes along the way though, and fortunately, there's some ways we can check our work. Validation is the name of a simple process that allows you to check if your HTML markup and cascading style sheets meet the specifications created by the W3C, or the World Wide Web Consortium. The web is a very forgiving software development environment. If you throw just about any sort of malformed HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at a web browser, it's going to try and do its best to understand what you meant. This can be bad because a lot of the time you've made a mistake and the browser interprets that mistake in unexpected ways. Let's go ahead and try validating some HTML markup. To do that, we're going to use this site, the W3C Markup Validation Service, available at validator.w3.org. The service offers three different ways of validating your code. If your code is already on the internet, you can just put in the web address and it will fetch your code and decide if it's valid. As a secondary option, you can upload your HTML file to the validation service and check your work that way. Last, you can copy and paste your code into a text box and validate it via direct input. Personally, I find the third option to be the most convenient, but they all work just the same. So, I have some HTML here from a previous project and I've intentionally inserted some common errors. Let's go ahead and select all this code and copy and paste it into the validator to see if we can't fix some of these problems. So I'll just go ahead and paste it right in here and click check. And as you can see, we do indeed have a few errors here. It's nothing we can't fix though. So let's go ahead and scroll down and look at what a few of these errors are. Now, first up right away, I can see that it looks like there's no doc type. So that's really important. Let's go ahead and fix that right now. So I'll just go ahead and put in our HTML5 doc type. And we'll save that. Copy and paste it again. And let's see if we have any more errors. Click revalidate. And it looks like we have even more errors now. This is only because the validator now knows what it should be validating against, which is HTML5. So let's scroll down and look at some of the problems here. The next problem it looks like we have is a stray angle bracket. So let's go ahead and switch back to the code and see if we can't track that down. It said it came right after or right before the UL tag, and I can see right here, this li tag is missing a closing angle bracket. So if we add that in and copy and paste, and go ahead and revalidate here, you can see that we're now down to just one error. So you can see that a stray angle bracket can actually cause a lot of errors. Let's go ahead and scroll down and it looks like we just have a stray end tag, which is a div tag in this case. So we'll skip back, and what it's actually saying is that this div tag all the way at the very end is the stray tag, but that's actually not the case. What this usually means is that there's some stray closing tag sitting somewhere that closes your divs too early and leaves a stray closing div at the end. Now right here, you can see that this div doesn't have an opening pair, so we'll just go ahead and delete that. And if we copy and paste and try to revalidate this code, you can see that it's now passed as HTML5 and we just have a few warnings, which we don't really need to worry about here. Now, just so you can see, let's go ahead and try validating some CSS. To do that, we need to visit the CSS validation service, which is available at jigsaw.w3.org slash css validator. So we'll go ahead and switch over to our text editor, and we'll just copy and paste some CSS here, and we'll do it by direct input, and check it. And there were no errors found. 
Now, most people wonder if validation even matters, which is completely understandable. Much of the time, when you're validating a web page, you might come across a few minor things that you fix just to validate your page, even though they don't have much perceived benefit to you or the user. So then, what's the point? Well, there's several reasons. For one, if you're experiencing some bugs or problems on your website that you're having difficulty tracking down, one great step to take is to validate your HTML and CSS. By stepping through the process of validation, you might find big errors you didn't even realize were there, such as stray tags or curly braces, that give your code a completely different meaning. Secondly, if you code to the standard most of the time, you can use the validation service to weed out little problems or even typos that you may have not realized were there. This may or may not impact your website right away, but down the road, too many of these issues can have some complex adverse effects. Validation is more of a preventative measure to make sure that your code is up to the specification so that when problems do come up, you can know fairly confidently that it's not invalid markup to blame. Finally, it's just good practice for the overall health of the web. The web is the largest collection of information ever created, and when everyone follows standards, it makes it possible to build better browsers and make the web more accessible. Now that we know how to validate our web pages, it should be easier to track down errors. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at different web browsers.